that's a great sign here. Pax man fever, devour blood. Isn't that, isn't that great? Today on NBC Sports. Good morning, Mr. Phelps. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to stop this man and his hot shooting blue demons. As always, the Irish will be fighting on your side. This encounter will explode. Good luck, Digger. Then, live from Atlantic City, middleweights Tony Braxton and Frank Fletcher. Braxton wants this title there, but the animal is ready for the kill. The USBA Championship bout, a knockout. Then the Pro Stars' last chance to capture the title from the All-Stars. Followed by World Cup Surfing, Women Pros from Hawaii. All today on NBC Sports. NBC Sports, in association with TBS, presents the best of college basketball. Today, from Notre Dame, Indiana, it's DePaul and the Irish of Notre Dame. Today's game is brought to you by the Miller Brewing Company, Brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. By Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. By the United States Navy, the Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. And by Gillette Atra Razor, the twin blade razor that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. talk about Notre Dame spirit, don't ever put Notre Dame in an underdog situation because you arouse a sleeping giant. Those fans are awesome. And they've just been really, to me, um, what makes that place special. The Irish are only 8-15. and 15. They meet the team with the longest winning streak in college basketball, DePaul. 20 in a row, over 11,000 fans. Here is the sixth man hoping for an Irish upset. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Al McGuire. Welcome to the Athletic and Convocation Center. a running transition game. Notre Dame wants to make it take a 40-point game and make a run at the end. Now we're also going to see two of the game's very best players, Terry Cummings of DePaul and John Paxson of Notre Dame. Terry Cummings is definitely an All-American, great turnaround jumper. Paxson faces as many different defenses as Ralph Sampson does in Virginia. And we'll meet the starting lineups in just a moment. That means it's Miller time. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. To an entering freshman, higher education can seem highly confusing. But at Smith College, a Honeywell computer has things under control. A Honeywell computer handles registration, class assignments, and sets maintenance schedules. Honeywell even considers personal interests before assigning roommates. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Volkswagen is having a black tie celebration. We're celebrating our big idea for the 80s, the new Quantum. Our new 82 Scirocco and two new specially equipped limited edition Volkswagens. The black tie pickup and rabbit. Not only do you get special equipment inside and out, you'll save $650 on the rabbit and pickup. And hurry, with $650 off, there's a lot to celebrate. 
Set special C and anchor detail. Right standard letter. Right standard letter I. Port of call, Hong Kong. Sir, combat hold skunk. The Navy. Over 75% of our jobs give you technical training. Get one. Let go of the anchor. Liberty call now, Liberty call. Speak to your recruiter or call this toll-free number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Here are the starting lineups for the visiting Blue Demons of DePaul University. At forward, 6'9", and a junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 32, Terry Cummings. At forward, 6'5", and a junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 22, Bernard Randolph. Center, 6'9", and a freshman from New Lenox, Illinois, number 13, Walter Downing. At guard, 6'1", and a freshman from New York City, number 10, Kenny Patterson. Ray Meyer calls him perhaps the best guard ever and will be by the time At he leaves to Paul. And, a sophomore and from there's Newark, a bit New of a Jersey, surprise. 14, Jerry, Jerry McMillan. McMillan starting for Skip Dillard. Oh, Dillard missed practice on Friday, will not start. That's a DePaul rule. Two-time Notre Dame captain and 1938 graduate, Ray Meyer. That's rad, Dick. Get in the hand at Notre Dame. <laughs> and now, the starting lineup for Go Fighting Irish. At forward, 6'6 and a junior from New Kensington, Pennsylvania. Number 34, Billy Barnard. Forward, 6-7 and a sophomore from the Motor City. Number 13, Barry Spencer. At center, 6-10 and a junior from Farmington, Michigan. Number 53, Tim Andre. At guard is the Irish captain, 6-2 and a senior from San Bruno, California. Number 15, He's a guard, he's 6'2", he's a junior, he's out of Kettering, Ohio. His number is 23, his name, John Axon. Axon leading the Irish in scoring, shooting percentage, Irish, assists and steals. Digger felt. And Digger who has struggled through an 8 and 15 year. But as he feels, an upset today over DePaul, there's has been the home of many upsets, would give the Irish and Phelps at least a sweet taste in their mouth late in this year. First half in a moment. Control six to base. Looks like this uh, big old hole in the ground is going to be safe for the night over. <laughs> they come out all beat. It's Miller time. Miller time. Time to appreciate the difference between a good beer when it's time to relax and a great beer. One beer stands clear. Miller Highlight. You got the time. We got the beer. Miller beer. Come Miller time. We got the beer. Why do 100,000 mile flyers choose United? You know, in this town, I never have a problem getting the best seat in the house, particularly when it's my show. Well, when I travel, I'm like anyone else, but I can still get the seat I want. Anyone can, by reserving it in advance on United. Seat 6B, Mr. Pat? Reserve your seat when you reserve your flight. United will hold it up to 15 minutes before takeoff. Row 6 on the aisle. Bravo, United. People who fly for a living fly United's friendly skies. The Blue Demons. They come into town with a 25 and 1 record, 20 victories in a row. Their starting lineup, West Virginia's 23 game streak ended yesterday. Rutgers beating the Mountaineers, so the ball with the longest gain. The Irish, a team that lost Tom Sluby, one of the starters, academically during the course of the year, and a little short in the pantry. Digger Phelps, and his team is 8 and 15, but looking for the upset today. Downing didn't even get off the floor. The Irish have it first. Paxson, who has been a true All-American on a losing team this year, an outstanding performer. Barner to Mitchell. Andre comes up high. Barner, the leading rebounder. And Paxson, he's the man that will draw all the defensive attention. 
Notre Dame is spreading it out, trying to make a lot of touches. That means a lot of passes, eat up the clock. They want to make it a 40-point game. They want to make it run at the end. A foul. The Irish can ill afford to get into a run and shoot game with DePaul. Tremendous quickness on this Blue Demon team and great athletes. Barner to the baseline. Paxson. Cummings is going to have to come out on Spencer. For Spencer will become the safety foul. Watch Spencer pop out each time. There's the ball to Spencer. Cummings has got to come out on him. Spencer, he had the shot, but traveled and trying to get his man off the floor. So DePaul has it for the first time on offense. The Irish took 51 seconds without a shot. Notre Dame has beaten Idaho and San Francisco here this year. Both were rated in the top 20 at the time. Notre Dame's in a 2-3 matchup zone, a 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone. The Irish are 7-7 seven and seven at home. That's Randolph. Rebound, Spencer knocked away by Downing. Out of bounds, Notre Dame. Here's a good move. The ball has to pick up the whole 94 feet. Put pressure on right away. But everyone has to pick up. They're allowing too many men, the big men, to come up and get the release pass. McMillan, Hawking, Paxson. McMillan in for the starter, Skip Dillard. Dillard is expected to come into the game five minutes or so into the contest. But it's a rule by the Irish. It wouldn't matter if it was in the tournament. If you miss a practice, you don't start the next game. Foul away from the ball. There you see the record for the Irish. Struggling only one win. That was at South Carolina, away from the ACC. McMillan picked up the foul. Paxson triggers the inbounds pass. Into Barner and now to Mitchell. No score. We played a minute and a half. Open is Barner and he traveled. So the Irish have worked it well to two easy shots, and both men have traveled to lose possession. In the back of the head, they're thinking of Cummings. He doesn't know where Cummings is, and he walked, obviously. He could have got off to a real fast start. He's looking for nothing more today. Down into the ball. Out to McMillan. The left-hander pops and hits Jerry McMillan from Newark, New Jersey. He's part of that New Jersey connection. Norwood, Garland, Bradshaw. For years, they've been feeding the blue teams in Chicago. Two minutes gone. Axon and McMillan knocks it out of bounds. Notre Dame and DePaul have played every year since Meyer took over at the campus in Chicago. The Blue Demons, that's 40 straight years they played each other. Axon's first shot is not there. A break for the Irish as it went off the top of the board. Spencer, Axon. The alley. Oh. Goal tending on downing. The ball would not have gone in. You're absolutely right, Dick. That ball was coming down short. Walter Downing being a freshman. Over anticipated. Now watch the ball. It's going to come down short. So it's 2-2. Two -two. Another angle. You had to put it very high in. So Walter just bats it out of there. DePaul, despite the fact they had that 20-game winning streak, they have been in countless close games lately. Back this week, one at Furman, 75-74. Spencer walked the foul. No foul on Downing. Excuse me. Looks like you have a head and shoulders fake and dragged his foot that time. He got hit before. The ball personal. Detroit, 13, Downing, beat, or the, uh, the ball beat Detroit 74-70, Furman 75-74, Evansville 59-58, Marquette a game we did 67-66. There have been a lot of close scares for the Blue Demons, but they've had the metal to, to finish on top in each game. I don't like it. They're going towards the NCAA tournament. There's too much time to fool around with fire. They're going to get burnt. You gotta have a knockout punch. You gotta be a Barracuda. You gotta win big. Spencer averaging just under six points a game and gets one out of the two free throws. Rebound Cummings. His first of the game is high this year, 19 three different times. 
They'll start punching it inside to coming soon, even though the pocket zone in there. Patterson, partially blocked and controlled by the Irish. Mitchell brings it down. Tries to feed Spencer, but it was alertly deflected away by DePaul. Three to two, Notre Dame leads it. Three minutes have been played. The ball start right here with a two-three zone. As soon as the ball goes in, Notre Dame will pull out. The ball will have to play man to man. Varner nope. banks it in, and it's five to two. Phelps Irish. Billy. Blue and gold streamers thrown out of the Notre Dame cheering section, so play delayed for a moment. Look how tight they all around the paint on the defensive end here. Notre Dame's just sagging underneath there. They don't want the ball to get the coming so they're down it. So Patterson pops and hits. Five to four as Patterson has his first hoop. The ball has to be more aggressive on defense. A little better now. Stay aggressive. Create play. Notre Dame wants to be patient. Eat up the clock. Mitchell, the only senior. Paxson, tough angle shot, can't hit it. And it's Cummings with a rebound. And Ray Meyer arguing that Andre fouled him. The Blue Demons looking for the lead, trailing 5-4. Cummings has not shot as yet. Bangs it in. It's 6-5 to Paul on the All-American Cummings first shot. Barner, Randolph hawking him. Good move by Barner. Sets up Andre. where we catch the block. Watch Vaughn bounce it over to Andre. Now oh, there he goes. Excellent. Now here's where he gets the goaltender. Ball started on its way down. Downing who had seven blocks in one of the games earlier this year. Not there, but Cummings is. Andy Paul back in front eight to seven. We played four ten of this first half. Second foul on McMillan, and we may see Skip Dillard shortly. It's no problem for the Paul. McMillan's expendable, so if anyone's going to pick up fouls, they prefer to do the So timeout with 15 minutes and 41 seconds. It is to Paul 8, Notre Dame 7. The scoreboard didn't register that last to Paul basket. We're right after all. I like it. Over 8 million men who have tried the Gillette Atra Razor like it. I like it. The Atra Razor pivots to continually hug every curve and contour for a better shave than any razor that doesn't pivot. I like it. And right now, to get you to try Atra, if you buy five blades, Gillette will give you this Atra Razor free. Free? I really like that. Tonight, the Martins are watching their whole world go up in flames. A home they may never get back. All-state update. Home replacement guarantee. The Martins have homeowner's insurance, but they don't have All-state's home replacement guarantee. It's better than inflation protection alone, because it guarantees All-state will pay to totally rebuild your home, brick for brick, regardless of cost. Today, you need All-state's home replacement guarantee. Another reason you're in good hands with All-state. Sears said they'd install the muffler in an hour. An hour's up. Since when does an hour mean 60 minutes? Confidence, Karen. Confidence. Now Sears will install the muzzler muffler for $24.99 within 60 minutes of your authorization or the muzzler labor charge is free. Ah, Mr. Carlson. 60 minutes on the nose. Well, I never doubted it for a second. For a great value and fast service, you can count on Sears. Hey, Arnold Palmer is having a get-together. Will it swing? Sure, everybody's going to be there. Is it a long drive? No, it's next weekend on NBC Sports. All right, what's the trap? No trap. It'll have golf's best. Gee, I hope the golden bear comes out of hibernation. Huh? 
If Paul eight, Notre Dame seven the score, and with 419 gone, Skip Dillard has returned to the lineup for DePaul, so his penalty for missing practice was a little less than uh, Ray Meyer told us before. He said five minutes. He's in after 419, having been played. McMillan out. Very important. He settles down the team. He is the floor captain. Mitchell. Out to Andre, passes up the 15-footer, takes the 10-footer. 9-8, Notre Dame has, Andre has his fourth point. Great shot by Tim Hughes, doesn't shoot that far out. Downing on the lob and a foul pushing on Spencer of Notre Dame. First on him. Interestingly, Notre Dame's nine points all coming from the front line. Here's a bad lob. <laughs> almost made the basket. Uh, almost went in. <laughs> Dillard, good outside shooter. Watch the ball get more in Cummings' hands once Dillard's in there. Downing. No! Not there. Rebound Barner. Paxson, he's not scored as yet. Nor has Mitchell with the ball now. lead 9-8 again the Pauls and the man to man trying to create play Mike Mitchell hits and it's 11-8 Mitchell's first basket Mike Mitchell is the key if Notre Dame's going to win today Mitchell has to get double figures Randolph inside to Downing Downing hits it's 11-10 his first basket they're not putting enough pressure up court. They're just covering the guards. Anytime they want to pass off, they can pass to any of the baseline men. If you're going to put full pressure over 94 feet, you've got to cover everybody. Dick Hendrick with Al McGuire. DePaul's Blue Demons will be interesting to see how our basketball writers at halftime have ranked the Blue Demons with the upset yesterday. Virginia losing to Maryland in overtime. DePaul certainly will be in the top three. They were last week, maybe number one, as they have a 25 and one record. They're the only team in the country that has lost only once, only major college basketball team. You'll notice Notre Dame has a high offense. It's a 2-3. They're trying to bring DePaul out and go back door. Andre. There it is. Paxson. It's his shot. His first basket, 13 to 10. What they do is extending the foul line. That's a high offense. Two men back court and three men along the foul line. Back into their matchup zone, 2-3 or 1-3-1. Three, one, three, one. When I say a matchup zone, that means that when they're covering the ball like now, the man's playing man-to-man -man principles, wherever the ball is. Into Downing. Awkward shot, and he hits it anyway off the wrong foot. Downing has four. 13 minutes left in the first half. As long as the Irish stay in the lead or close, they'll have the advantage of the sixth man, the crowd itself. Just going nice and easy each time down, taking 20, 25 seconds. Watch them try to pull them all high again now. All three underneath the basket for one on one or back door. Pull it back high again, Notre Dame. Jackson could not get inside. Gets a Andre free for a moment. Blocked by Cummings. Beautiful play by Terry Cummings. Patterson brings it down. Cummings earned this one. And rattles it home. DePaul leads 14-13. Six points for Cummings. That was a tough shot by TC. That was way out there. Got the block on one end and scored the deuce on the other one. DePaul leading for the fourth time in this first half. Andre and a foul on Cummings this time. Let's go back to the block by Cummings on the previous play. Well, Andre doesn't really get up that high. Terry just comes over and clears it out of there. Here it comes. And Cummings on the play the we've just seen. Number 32, Terry Cummings has submitted first. his first foul on the line is Tim Andre. Andre, a junior from Farmington, 6'10", Farmington, Michigan. Went to Brother Race High School there in the Detroit area. If, if we could see behind the basket now to set an example of what happens when the home team is shooting, then later in the game, when the ball's shooting into this student body. Andre hits 
to cleanly. And the Irish are back in front. Timeout, exactly 12 minutes remaining in the first half here on the campus of Notre Dame. And the Irish lead the Blue Demons, 15-14. For special offers on American-made tools, come to your participating hardware or home center store's great All-American Workshop sale. Save now on 10-inch vice grip straight jaw pliers and 7-inch vice grip pliers with wire cutter. Buy this Hobby Crafter Work Center and Vice by Black & Decker and get a 14-piece Exacto knife set free. For all those jobs around the house, the burns matic Oxygen Tote Torch. Now with free safety goggles from burns matic They're just some of the specials now at your hardware home center store during the great All-American Workshop sale. <laughs> Light beer from Miller tastes just great, and that's no fish story. But the best thing is, it's less filling. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and that's important when you're trying to land that big one. Like yesterday, I hooked this bass, fought it for over six hours. All of a sudden, he jumps clean over the boat. Broke my rod, and I had to tie the... No, wait a minute, fellas. I had to tie the... Light line beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Left me out there with nothing but a paddle. Don't miss Superheroes, postseason powerhouses, the Premier Conference Tournament, the ACC Championship Game, exclusively on the home of great college basketball, next Sunday on NBC Sports. In his 40 years at DePaul, Ray Meyer with 675 wins, and this graph demonstrates how he has done in five-year periods, 45 to 50, 85 wins. That would average about 17 a game. And then down to 15, down to 12 in the 55 to 60 period, then back up, down to 12 wins a year again between 65 and 70. And in the last 10 years, shooting upward, averaging almost 25 wins a year in the last five seasons. So stay with your coaches out there. Give them a chance to prove themselves. Too many of the schools out there change coaches too soon. softly off the glass and DePaul leads 16 to 15 with 11.45 left in this first half. Eight points for Cummings and a foul in the backcourt on Patterson of the Blue Demons. Took the call a handshake. Put his hand on his hip. Tyrone Corbin has replaced Walter Downing in the DePaul lineup. Corbin a freshman from Columbia, South Carolina where is number 23. I think from now on it's one and one. One foul shot in the bonus, and boy, it's early. There's 11 and a half minutes left to go. That alone can keep Notre Dame in the game if they make their foul. The Irish with the ball trailing by a point, 16-15. Again, if you notice on the screen, they're trying to get the offense high. Just the opposite of what the ball is trying to do. They're trying to get their offense low. They get high here, allow one and one to go back door. See the five guys from Notre Dame are all above the foul line, which is 15 feet from the basket. And the basket is 10 feet from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so what's for the game's mathematics? Paxson yeah. has a two, and it's 17-16. He has four. Well, I tell you what, the deck of cards is favoring Notre Dame. Everything's falling their way so far. The rhythm of the game, the tempo, the foul situation. Now what the ball has to do is punch that ball into uh, coming. That's where it's at. Bernard Randolph, he hits from the side, his favorite spot, and it's 18-17, Randolph's first points. He's a scoring machine. Score down low, outside, off the foul line, on the transition. Paxson working against the veteran Dillard. Spencer against Corbin, and he's got, no, he did not hit the 10-footer. Dillard. Get in the middle, Dillard, on the fast break. Shouldn't stay on that left side that time. Should have moved into the middle. Randolph, same spot. Mitchell, great no-look pass to Varner. Now into Spencer, over Cummings! Cummings was hesitant at that time because Andre was free on the right-hand side. At the 10-minute mark, Notre Dame back in front by a point. Again, they're in the matchup zone. They're now to the side of Patterson. Tyrone Corbin, the freshman, not there. Tipped in by Cummings. Terry Cummings has 10 points already, and it ball leads 20 to 19. Again, now watch him set high. Ball still trying to create action. They're the better ball club. 
So when you overplay, you're, you're vulnerable for back doors. Because you're overplaying. If you turn your head, it's a two points. Maxson draws Patterson. And the junior. Off to Andre, another junior. Not there. Dillard brings it out for DePaul. Patterson wide open. And DePaul leads, and it's their biggest lead of the game by three. 8.54 left. At halftime, Al McGuire and Digger Phelps, and they get into quite a verbal uh, duel. Yeah, Digger was uh, out front, I'll say, conservatively. <laughs> I think we'll enjoy this piece with Digger at halftime. The ball now with a three-point lead, settles into a 2-3 zone. Let's see what Notre Dame will do. Will they attack the zone, or will they attack the clock? Looks to me like they're going to attack the clock. Now, all they have to do the man out there, break that hash mark every 10 seconds. See where um, Mitchell is now? That's the hash mark. It extends three feet into the court. I believe that hash mark should be moved more into the forecourt. Paxson is free outside the zone and way off the mark on his shot. And Cummings rebounds for DePaul. One thing is quite evident. The Notre Dame gets one shot and one shot only at their end. that time, Tim. Big board. 22-19. DePaul leads Notre Dame with seven minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. I say that Digger makes him come out of the zone. Now, even with a lead, the ball is a three-point lead. It's up to Notre Dame to create play. Paxson back outside to Mitchell. As long as they're over the hash mark, Dick, it's play. Inside to Spencer working on Cummings. Nice move by Spencer, but he can't hit the shot. And Patterson at 6 one and a half. Up high for the rebound. Coming. Patterson. And it's Randolph with a loose ball underneath. And the ball opens a five-point lead. He has a nose for the ball with the garbage basket, but a big one. And timeout called by Digger Phelps. As again, the Irish getting good shots, but when they miss, it's the ball's ball. The superior rebounding team, the Blue Demons. Ray Myers Club ahead by five with seven minutes left first half. Navy flight operations, Hawaiian Islands. 155 is a go bird. And the green stripe runner. Bring up 155 on number two elevator. Cloud top to 28,000 feet. Alpha Hotel, your wind is down the deck at 28 knots. The Navy, over 75% of our jobs give you technical training. Get one. Launch aircraft. And clear, and clear. Speak to your local recruiter or call this toll-free number. Navy, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. Business is so quiet. You could read the books here. That book by the phone can help. The Bell System Yellow Pages. Free parking, free delivery. That's Fred. Fred's furniture next door. Oh, he does a great business. Where beautiful hair is a tradition. That's Miss Clear. <laughs> oh, is she busy? Sure. The Bell System Yellow Pages talks to people when they let their fingers do the walking and are ready to talk business. I'm ready. Get the Yellow Pages talking. We're big on books. Let your fingers do the walking. Hey, Arnold Palmer is having a get-together. Will it swing? Sure, everybody's going to be there. Is it a long drive? No, it's next weekend on NBC Sports. All right, what's the trap? No trap. It'll have golf's best. Gee, I hope the golden bear comes out of hibernation. Huh? <laughs> DePaul leading Notre Dame 24 to 19. Seven minutes remaining in the first half. If you were coaching, I know we wouldn't be able to put a microphone in your huddle, not very often. I was too salty. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go into the DePaul huddle, and the voice you'll hear most clearly is that of Joe Meyer, the assistant coach and the son of head coach Ray. Well, I guess we're not going to go into that huddle. We did tape the discussion during the intermission apparently a mechanical problem we'll try to bring that to you later what was happening Joey was telling the press in the corners double team and coach Ray Meyer was saying score score <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cecil Rucker in the game Barner follows a very important hoop for Notre Dame 24-21 Barner on the follow there's that one three one zone not letting the ball inside. The only player change for Notre Dame. Rucker has replaced Spencer. Patterson, not there. Rebound Mitchell. Might have gotten away with a push. Excellent timeout that time by Diggerfeld. Great call. And now Notre Dame in the 
bonus situation was 631. And uh, had a technical, technical call. Foul. Technical on number 22, Bernard Randolph. Randolph called for the technical. I believe Randolph might have been the man pushed on, on that last rebound and complained to the official. Normally when you get a technical, Dick, usually you're right. <laughs> and, the, and the referee overreacts. Paxson makes the free throw. Notre Dame has the ball. Dick Hamburg and Al McGuire were at the Athletic and Convocation Center at Notre Dame, where DePaul, one of the top teams in the nation, longest winning streak, 20 in a row, leading Notre Dame 24-22. The Irish are 8 and 15. This is a game with a victory that would get this campus revved up again. It's been a long year for them, both in football and basketball. Last time they had losing seasons in football and basketball was 1963-64. Jordan was the basketball coach and Duval was the football coach. A steal by Randolph and leading by two and there's a foul against Patterson in the backcourt. Ray Meyer, winning his coach, active coach in the country. Here scores the top 20 yesterday. No less than seven teams, top 20 teams tasted defeat. State continues to win. Maryland upsetting Virginia. Georgetown coming very quickly. Idaho wins again. Minnesota wins at Iowa in overtime. Bradley ups uh, wins. That's not an upset, but Tulsa was in the top 20. Rutgers ends West Virginia's 23-game streak. LSU bombs Kentucky. Sweet silence. Mitchell earns the front end. It's 24-23. He can tie it with this one. DePaul has not been at the free throw line. And Mitchell looking for six for seven for the Irish in this half. I'll say it once more, Dick. Mitchell has to get double figures for Notre Dame to win. He now has four points. And the crowd back in the game. What the Paul is doing is running their normal offense. They don't care whether it's a zone or a man to man. They don't want to waste time analyzing each time down. What they're going to have to do is take the outside shot and hammer the boards. Put Corbin underneath there with, with Terry Cummins and Randolph. Get into Terry. There you go. Ball to go. Foul. Ball was stolen, but a foul against, I believe, Barner. Might be Andre. We'll wait. I thought the back guy fouled him that time, Dick. It was Mitchell. Number 15, Mitchell got him. So he was surrounded by three of the Irish. They're all reaching, and Mitchell gets the penalty. And it is a shooting foul, apparently. Remember before when I said how quiet it was? Listen to the noise now. <laughs> Digger Phelps thought that Cummings was not shooting. And Cummings just solid in all aspects of the game. A 75% free throw shooter. Taps one in. Looking for his 12th point of the game. And DePaul leads 26-24 with five and a half minutes remaining before the intermission. Walter Downing back in and Randolph comes out. Coming forward to Coach Meyer that time says, what do you want? Coach says, get up on him. Almost a turnover saved by Mitchell and now Paxson against Dillard will bring it up. Rucker, Washington, D.C. product. Down, you got to move up on them. That's better. Cummings and Downing don't want to come out of the paint defensively. It's allowing Notre Dame again to govern the rhythm, the tempo. There's a steal by Dillard. And it all leads 28-24. Bigger Phelps drops his head that time. That's what he didn't want to happen. That's a no-no. That's what you call in basketball a ball of sin. Paxson takes it right back to Dillard and misses. And Dillard gets the rebound. So with a four-point lead, the Blue Demons bring it up court. I'd like to mark that spot, Dick. I think that might be the turning point of the game, that, that, that turnover. It came at the 528 mark and gave uh, DePaul a four-point lead. From the two. Yeah. Cummings, or barely above rim height all the way, line drives it home, and that is DePaul's biggest lead, 30 to 24. 
Yep. <clears throat> Notre Dame just cannot turn over the ball, especially with a chippy layup on the other end. Jackson, two men on him, Patterson and Dillard. Mitchell, way short. And now the Blue Demons in control of this game. Leading 30 to 24. Oh, what a move. And Cummings, not there. Rebound for the Irish. And Digger off the seat to say, slow it down. Go easy, slow it down. He wants to get back within four points. He doesn't want to waste his time out. He called one already. second. Let's go back to the Dillard steal. The pass was terrible. Mitchell's pass was terrible there. Obviously, Dillard has a nose for the ball. That's what you call an Andy Oakley. 30 to 24. Phelps Irish have uh, Paxson at the line. Junior from Kettering, Ohio, near Dayton. 6'2", 180. Averaging nearly 15 a game. As I said earlier, he's getting as many defenses thrown at him as Ralph Sampson gets for the cross on the baseline. He's been seeing three ones and box ones and, and combinations on him. Has performed brilliantly on a team that has won only eight games, and that's why he's being considered as one of the top 10 candidates for both the Naismith Award and the Wooden Award as college basketball's best. Timeout, the ball by four. The beauty of a Delta faucet is when it's on, it's on. And when it's off, it's off. Its washerless design helps keep it from dripping, so it lasts and lasts and lasts. Delta Faucet. We're first because we last. How about Michelob Light for the winners? Sure! But we get mighty thirsty! Oh. A bunch of guys really go at it this hard just for a beer? Well, consider it's Michelob Light, and that means a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Those guys could have beaten the Russians today. You think they play us for a Michelob Light? Michelob Light. Compare the taste. Be ringside as Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Then the All-Stars and the Pro Stars go down to the wire in a team skate-off of the World Championship, plus Women's Pro World Cup surfing on NBC Sports World. Next. Three minutes and 18 seconds before halftime. Let's listen to the DePaul huddle. Tight zone. Tight zone. Stay in tight and be active on his own. Run the face, sir. Oops, I guess we again had a little technical problems there. Joe Meyer, what was interesting about the discussion, Joe Meyer does most of the talking, and Ray Meyer, the head coach, does most of the cheering in there. Encouraging. Is that the way it was with you and Hank Raymond? Just about the same. But every time Joey speaks to his dad, he calls him coach, which is nice. 30 to 26, to Paul leads by four as they go for their 21st consecutive win. Dillard inside, not there. Tipped in. Notre Dame come out with a surprise pinch type of attack, trying to pinch the guys in the corners. Paul got a break with a cry, a drop in at the end. Six point spread, two and a half minutes, 240 left. and work so very carefully to get a good shot because they know they rarely get the second opportunity. Rucker into the paint to score. Cecil Rucker has his first points and the ball's lead cut to four. Oh, He's bigger than he looks, Dick. He's six foot eight. Well sought after high school ball player. From Mack in high school in the nation's capital. Duck Williams, Austin Carr came from that same school in Notre Dame. More finesse than a physical player. with a dozen points. And a dozen guys around him. <laughs> and it goes out of bounds to Notre Dame. Cummings now with 14 points to lead all scores. Two minutes and seven seconds left in this first half at Notre Dame. The Irish, the underdogs, trailing the Blue Demons by four. It's been... 
back and forth. Both teams enjoying the lead. Paxson has been called, can't hit, and a foul pushing against Rucker of Notre Dame. NBC Sports World to follow. Live boxing, figure skating, surfing. Another outstanding show. It'll be Fletcher and Braxton for the USBA Middleweight Championship. And the finals of the World Professional Figure Skating from Landover and surfing from Hawaii. One, two, two, pressure all over the court, trying to pinch. Downing hits a 15-footer, and the Blue Demons back in front by six. Digger, don't do that anymore. They just scored the last two times down. I think you're better off setting back in your matching zone. The Irish trying to manufacture one in their many series of upsets at home against top-rated teams. Almost a steal by Dyrone Corbin against Varner. We're down to the 109 mark, and a steal by Cummings of the ball. Less than a minute to go. And a whistle away from the ball. Vaughn was beaten too much on Cummings that time. His first foul. This will score and logs it in his book, and DePaul will play it underneath the basket. Alan Digger, it's not the ordinary hi, how are you interview at halftime. They kind of got after each other. Notre Dame now back in the 2-3 zone, which I think they should have stayed in. I wouldn't be surprised to see DePaul play for the last shot. It appears that's going to be it. Uh, North Dame has to put two men out to create play. The losing team must always create play. But as long as you break that hash mark, you see the hash mark there on the upper part of your screen, and you, then you're safe. 30 seconds left first half. DePaul leading 34 to 28. This has been the biggest lead. They got six yes, points. Yes, six points matches their biggest lead. They have a chance to go in at halftime with their best advantage of the game. It'll be Downing who takes it and hits. Boy, he came back after that rest and hit two bombs. Ten points for Downing. Time running out on Notre Dame, trailing by eight. Paxson, Mitchell, Paxson deep on the side to hit at the buzzer. That was downtown. A very important score for the Irish as they lead the floor down by six. Paxson with eight points in the first half. Notre Dame trails the ball 36-30. Most interesting halftime clash verbally between Al McGuire and Digger Phelps. We'll have our top 20, but first we pause for these words. This is where you come to be really refreshed for a taste so cool, so delicious, it could only be Velaments. For a taste so fresh, it takes your breath away. Great taste that only happens here. Velaments, great taste that's always cool and clear. Cool refreshment, that's the Velaments taste. Great taste that only happens here. Velaments. You don't have to put up with hotel excuses like the maid, the TV man, or the plumber is gone for the day. Because Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or will make it right. No excuses. Or that night, you stay free. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain. Not one. So, let us take care of you. Holiday Inn gives you a guarantee. Not excuses. I didn't know that. I'm absolutely shocked. I'm surprised because I've always thought that Michelin were the top tires. These Michelin owners have heard the big news about the Uniroyal Steeler. On a government-prescribed course, Uniroyal rates its Steeler to deliver at least 20% more mileage than Michelin's ratings. At least 20% more mileage with Steelers. That's the big surprise. I might buy him. In fact, I will buy him. The Uniroyal Steeler. We give you more to go on. I'm surprised. I really am. Dear Curtis Mathis, recently a tornado destroyed our home. The first thing my husband looked for was our new Curtis Mathis color TV. It was scratched up a bit, but when we plugged it in, it worked perfectly. I only wish you'd made everything else in our home. Sincerely, Martha Fulkin. We can't guarantee our televisions will survive a tornado, 
but we do think they'll last a long, long time. Curtis Mathis, the most expensive television in America, and worth it. Sunday, it's 100 of the world's sexiest women from 30 years of the best of hope and a star-studded extravaganza. Bob Hope's Women I Love, Beautiful But Funny. At the half, 36-30, DePaul leading Notre Dame in the final game of the regular season for the Blue Demons, looking for their 21st consecutive win. Coming up, Al McGuire and Digger Phelps. And Al asked the big question, Digger, how could it happen? 8 and 15 this year. First these words, your local station. Sunday, at a special time, Ponch and John make a false arrest. He's not drunk, he's deaf. On chips. Then, it's 100 of the world's sexiest women in Bob Hope's Women I Love, Beautiful But Funny. And just when you thought it was safe to watch the tube, it's an all-new TV, Censored Bloopers 3. It all happens Sunday on NBC. Aerial view of South Bend, Indiana, on the campus of Notre Dame. We remind you that college basketball is being brought to you by... Budweiser, for all you do, this Bud's for you. By Texaco, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. By Sears Roebuck Company, you can count on Sears. And by Emory Worldwide, when you're shipping ounces to tons, you need the Emory Edge. Why is our copier smarter than theirs? Compare the Savin 883 on my left with the Xerox 4000 on my right. You'll find that only one has a microprocessor and an electronic brain that can transform an unclear original into a clear copy. Only one has a fully automatic document feed and only one has an energy-saving automatic shutoff. On all these points, one copier outsmarts the other. The Savin. Sometimes a simple river crossing isn't so simple. And when you've got him back, it's your turn. Push! Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream, for a taste as smooth as its name. Push! Head for the brush beer. Head for the mountain. At Ford Motor Company, quality is job one. We are wrapping the wiring harnesses under the instrument panel in a cloth tape to prevent rattles and squeaks. The goal here is to eliminate squeaks and rattles. This is how we uh, pinpoint the noise to get the exact location of the problem. In this way, uh, we improve customer quality. If you're shipping big and small packages, you could feel left up in the air. If you don't know the company that has its own scheduled delivery of virtually any size package the next morning. Nope, it's not any of them. Introducing Emory AN. Only Emory delivers any size shipment from ounces to tons to most of America the very next morning. It's the Emory Edge. Take us up on it. It's an all-new TV Censored Bloopers number three with Dick Clark. It's full of slips, falls, and floods you were never supposed to see in here. Good lucky start. Sunday. Sunday morning, local sports headlines. Hoping for the upset, and the Irish still looking for the miracle against a team that is outstanding, currently ranked second in our pool, the DePaul Blue Demons, who lead at 36-30 at the intermission. Let's look at the individual and team statistics in the first 20 minutes of this game. For Notre Dame and DePaul, in most every column, it's uh, the Blue Demons. With the exception of the foul shots, Notre Dame is eight of the nine, which is keeping them right in the ball game. The turnovers, Notre Dame has turned the ball over twice more. It's a very important statistic. And that one Dillard turnover that led to a score. The game was two points at the time. DePaul went on to build an eight-point lead, and then Paxson's long jumper at the buzzer cut it to six as we enter the second half. Individual scoring for the Blue Demons, the All-American Cummings, another outstanding game. He has 14 points, and he's hardly touched the ball. Downing with eight. Well, see, it's Downing and Cummings. It's the baseline. They get 22 points in the baseline. It's DePaul's baseline against Notre Dame's guards. 
And for the Irish, indeed, they were led by their All-America candidate, John Paxson, with nine points. Andre chipped in with six, Farner with six, Mitchell, the other starting guard, with four. To start the second half, it'll be DePaul's ball. Let's check the lineups. Mitchell and Paxson with Spencer, Varner, and Andre for the Irish. DePaul has Patterson, Randolph, Dillard, Downing, and Cummings. Notre Dame starting out the 1-3-1 matchup zone. Biggest lead for Notre Dame in the first half was three points. We had a dozen lead changes, and DePaul's largest advantage was eight. Paul seems hesitant in attacking the zone to start of the second half here. They're looking to kick it inside. Hey, Paul now in the second half will be shooting into the Irish cheering section, the student body. Downing in the middle. He hits again. And Walter Downing. Got a good first half, making four out of five. Is five out of six from the floor in this game. Ball goes back into his zone now. They got an eight-point lead. They're not as nervous. Two-three zone. Notre Dame's going to have to hit from the outside. Mitchell has to move a little bit closer. Varner moves in a little closer and hits the 12-footer. 38-32. Varner with eight points. Notre Dame needs a turnover. They're sitting back to make the ball attack. At the start of the year, Ray Meyer said the key to this year's team, if they were going to be truly outstanding, was in the center position, Walter Downing. Downing started slowly. He's averaging less than five a game, but he's played better and better. He has 10 points today. His high this year is 13, and he's got the hot hand. Doesn't get that one, and Andre and Cummings, and Andre wins the battle. Trailing by six, Paxson with the honors. And again, Notre Dame will attack the zone, will go for about the 16-foot shot, 17-foot shot. There it is. Nope. Inside to Spencer, gets Downing in the air, can't score. And the foul against Downing, although he took the worst of that exchange. Watch Spencer with a different move. He has a lot of head and shoulder fakes. And sometimes he drags his foot. I thought they were going to call him for walking. Watch all the head and shoulder fakes right now. See this? There's another one. There's another one. He gets you off, off your feet, and he jumps into you. Could have been a three-point play. Did not go in. The third foul on Downing, and he'll come out immediately as Tyrone Corbin replaces the freshman center. Downing leaving with 10 points. Spencer at the line, the sophomore from Detroit. He's not a good free-throw shooter, 58% on the year. Great game against South Carolina, and they won by a point or two. He scored 13 points in the game. He needs a little bit more strength up around the shoulder. He gets one out of two, and it's a 38-33 to Paul Lee. Just underway in the second half. See how tight Notre Dame is under the basket there? Patterson. And Corbin bats it out to Dillard. Skip Dillard from the corner, and it's 40-33. Dillard with four. When in doubt, go to the senior. How do you think this DePaul team matches up with those that entered the last two tournaments as the number one club in the country? I, I think they're just the same. I feel if North Carolina loses in the ACC tournament, they will do win number one. It's the NCAA, which they did the last two years. Downing blocks Spencer, and this is Dillard. Woo! Side. DePaul with a seven-point lead. I don't think DePaul knows how to milk the lead. Cummings gets the bucket. It was Cummings who blocked at the other end, and once again, as he did the first half, scores at DePaul's end of the court. He has 16. We group Irish. Yep. The biggest DePaul lead, up to nine points. So Digger Phelps calls time. Three minutes and five seconds gone in the second half, and now it gets tough for Digger and the Irish. Hey, I've played some tough courses, but how's this for being in the rough? Here, Texaco is getting more oil out of the ground by heating it with steam. Techniques like this are helping us get more energy for you. Here's another tough course. 
This water hole is 260 feet deep, 70 miles out in the Gulf. But Texaco is getting the oil out here, too. At Texaco, we're using our energy to get you more energy for the future. You can trust the star at home and in your car. Navy missile exercise, Atlantic Range. The Navy. Over 75% of our jobs give you technical training. Get one. Target's turning starboard outbound. Fire. Birds away. Navy. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Buds for all the guys who keep the action from getting out of hand. This Bud's for you, for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. They go out on you guys in the corner, that leaves it open in the middle, so run through it anyway. Even if they're waiting, they it brings them out and leaves it open inside. All day, we got the limit. <laughs> Ray's saying all day, all day. Ray, now the clock's a friend of the falls. But I like the way Ray says, bomb away, nice and easy. No bomb. Don't have to shoot him out there. <laughs> and Terry Cummings with an interesting comment. We've got all the boards, and he's absolutely right there. They really dominated on the rebounding. Notre Dame trailing by nine, facing its largest deficit of this game. Wall, the man to man. Ah! Viner, a tough bank shot by Bill Viner. And he has ten points. They fall by seven, three and a half minutes gone in the second half. Off the fingertips of Cummings. Gave him a new face that time. The Irish come out with a man to man. The ball wasn't patient enough. Reiner, and he throws it right back away as he tried to hit Mitchell. So the press by DePaul forces the return turnover. That was a big opportunity for the Irish to cut into the lead. Dillard all alone, and he draws the foul from Andre with the body. His first. NBC Sports World to follow. Live boxing, two outstanding middleweights will be featured from Atlantic City. Frank the Animal Fletcher, challenged by Tony Braxton. That's a live 12-rounder. Plus the finale of the five weeks of World Professional Figure Skating Championships from Landover, Maryland. And the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship, NBC Sports World to follow. Dillard, the team's best free throw shooter, has his fifth point of the game. And the senior from Westinghouse High School in Chicago hits them cleanly, and it's a 44-35 default lead. And again, pressure causing some problems, and Rucker helps out. Nice pressure up court by DePaul. Rucker off to Paxson, two on one over Cummings. And it just won't drop, and Rucker there to bang it home. Cecil Rucker. Patterson to Corbin. Tyrone Corbin connects. And it's 46-37. Corbin has four. Oh, what a find he was for DePaul. A very, very late recruit. He was just sitting there in Columbia, South Carolina, and DePaul reached down and plucked him out of that fine city, and he has become a very valuable man on this DePaul team. Far beyond the expectations of Meyer. Well, he was a surprise, and on his team, he was overshadowed by the guy Xavier McDonald. Oh, went to the cross state. Rucker misses the shot and then fouls Cummings trying to get the rebound. Watch Rucker go up on this tip. What he normally does, you put one hand up, but he puts both arms up. Watch both arms go up on a tipper. Here he comes. Come on, Rucker. See both? <laughs> he tapped it with both. A little volleyball shot. It's 36-37 to Paul. 15-20 left. Dillard. Oh, the ball 
putting on a shooting show. He has eight. That's the biggest Blue Demon lead, 11. And Ron Rowan, the freshman, good outside shooter, checking it at the scorer's table for another name. Got to get the ball to Paxton. He's been cold, coach. Yeah, they got to get it to him. He's their only hope that it's going to be a miracle. He was three for eight in the first half and missed his one attempt in the second half, so he's shooting only 33%. Maneuvering and tough luck yeah. and a foul on Rucker pushing away his third. In comes Rowan and out goes Rucker. Ron Rowan, number 24 from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, 6'5 freshman, averaging six points a game. Nice play by Andre, fronting coming. Paxson can't hit again. Andre and a foul on Andre over the shoulder of Cummings. Definitely on his back. He needed the saddle that time. And Paxson again just can't get it to drop. Well, he put a little bit too much spin on this one. He got hung in the air. Just put a little bit too much English on it. Now watch Tim come over the back of uh, Terry Cummings there. He hipped him. And when, and when Andre hips you, you've been hipped. <laughs> Second foul on Andre. Cummings over Andre, can't hit it. Cummings fights and gets it back. Randolph. Nice move by Bernard Randolph, and it's 50 to 37, and the Blue Demons celebrate. Starting to move out. And timeout called by Digger Phelps on the Irish sidelines, and the DePaul fans have a chance to cheer as their team comes off. It's an outstanding team looking for its 21st in a row. This laugh isn't for everybody, but for me, nothing beats it. And nothing beats my skull either. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum. Sure feels good. I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And for me, Walt Garrison, this is the only way to live. Try going smokeless with Skull, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. Now, Confidence is on sale. Save 20% on Sears Heavy Duty Plus shocks, 30% on Sears Best Steady Rider shocks, and Not today. if you want to keep rolling, Confidence. save 25% on Sears SuperGuard Steel Belted Radial Tires. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, we install confidence. You can count on Sears. After four exciting weeks, the grand finale, the competition between the All-Stars and the Pro-Stars goes down to the wire. A unique team skate-off to decide the title of the World Pro Figure Skating Championship on NBC Sports World next. Suffering through an 8 and 15 season. Three games left next week against Northern Iowa at Dayton and finishing against the University of Michigan. For DePaul, this is their last regular season game with a whole week to go. So they've scheduled an athletes in action contest. It will not count against their regular season mark just to have a tune up game before the tournament. Otherwise, they'd be idle for two weeks. What happens, Dick, by NCAA rules, you're allowed 27 games and one warm up game preseason. They did not take a warm-up game. It was a great move by Ray Meyer because he thinks his team gets rusty and he feels that part of the reason that they lost the last two opening rounds in the NCAA is because they had to wait 10 days for the game to come around. Bernard Randolph committed the foul. Let's look at the second to 10 in our poll. Tulsa, loser yesterday to Bradley. Arkansas, Iowa, lost to Minnesota. West Virginia lost. Kentucky, those were the teams that were up higher, but they most all of them lost yesterday. It was a Black Saturday for the top teams. Big win by Bradley. Congratulations to Dick Versailles for winning the Missouri Valley. Inside Andre. Big bucket by Tim Andre. He has eight points. 50 to 39. The Irish trail by 11. Irish have to come out now, man to man. Score dictates that. Coming. Well, Andre and Cummings, they're really going at it in the post. They're banging in there. And a turnover. Uh, no, jump ball is the call. It'll go to Notre Dame. Dual 
possession, and it's Notre Dame's turn. They were hustling for that ball. They're banging inside here, Cummings and Tim Andre. I didn't think it was a jump ball because Corbins did not have a, a hold of the ball at all. Notre Dame gets it out. Trailing by 11 points. 13 minutes left in the game. Paxson. Inside Andre. He scores and he's fouled by Corbin. Beautiful bounce pass here. Pro pass. Now he just goes in, uses his weight and his body. Corbin comes over. Could be a three point play. The sixth man is now started in the crowd. Here comes Corbin. Hits him, obviously. Off the glass. Bingo, bango. Notre Dame down by 13. Andre gets two consecutive baskets, and they almost got the rebound out of that as Marner was up high. The ball leads. 12.38 left. Inside of Cummings. And he is fouled by Andre. Basket is good. Third foul on Andre. Let's look at it from our roof angle. Andre cannot play in front of Cummins. He was in front of him there. If he does play in front of him, someone got to help from the weak side. Otherwise, Terry Cummins will get a thousand points. Cummings will look for his 19th point on this free throw. Averaging 22 a game. He's in the top 15 in both rebounds and scoring average among the nation's major colleges. Back to a 12-point lead are the Blue Demons. Next Sunday, the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship, Tournament Championship game. Mitchell throws it up, rebound Corbin. And then Paxson trying to tie up Corbin, cannot do it. We got the numbers down this end this time. And Paxson hustles back and makes a great play. for charging into Randolph on this play. Watch him come from nowhere. There's the pass. There he comes. Hits the ball. His momentum took him into Randolph. It was a foul. Paxson thought he made a great hustle play, which he did, but there was contact and the foul. And if things go according to the way they're be seated in that ACC. We could likely get a North Carolina Virginia game next Sunday. We'll have the championship of the tournament at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. Paxson with another foul, his third. Well, next Sunday we'll also name Dick our all freshman team, our coach of the year, and our player of the year. And that'll all be next Sunday in our final regular season basketball telecast. And I will also tell you what four teams will be dancing on Bourbon Street and have breakfast at Brennan's. You're going to tell us uh, your pick for the national champion, too? That's right. Well, I can't wait for that. <laughs> There's no way they'll get there. Here's a nice shot from the top. Paxson. Fans thought Paxson was fouled. He goes all the way against Cummings and can't hit. And Cummings rebounds. Oh, Cummings and hit Paxson the back. gets it. See what happened that time, Dick? Cummings threw from underneath the basket and hit the backboard. Paxson and a foul on Randolph, Bernard Randolph. That's why you should make the, never take the ball out of bounds under the basket because you can't throw a long pass down forty of any size. Third on Randolph. McMillan comes in and Patterson goes out for DePaul. Paxson doesn't get up high enough on this drive and watch it kind of stays low in there. Puts it up shy. Now watch him throw the ball out here, Dick. Watch, he catches the backboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Paxson thought Cummings was going to step in front of him and was waiting for the contact. Yeah. John Paxson has his 10th point of the game. That was good camera work that time. He's perfect four for four from the line. 53-43, the ball. A lot of time left. Oh, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. Uh oh. <laughs> and possible three point play as Andre commits the foul and Cummings makes the bucket. What do you think NC means, Dick? No contest. That's right. It's curtains. Once Cummings gets, gets Tim Andre in there in a one on one, that's um, a long walk on a short pier. Here it comes up again. Here we go to school. 
is a super All-American. I do believe he's the second best ball player in the country. That was a great uh, headline on the Sports Illustrated column on Cummings a couple of weeks ago. The best college player under seven foot four inches in the nation. <laughs> well, if Sam Bowie was playing, I wouldn't make that statement. For Cummings, his average has been reached 22 points, and he has 11 and a half minutes to add to it. In case you're wondering, his all time high is 37 against Louisville. Nice ball handling. Barner partially blocked by Cummings. Oh, he's going at both ends of the court. He is 100% man. Only a junior. That, that be, um People saying he might leave after this year, so we, we asked him, what do you think about that? He said, whatever God tells him, he, he's a minister, and he has a fine faith. Tyrone Corbin, and DePaul builds its lead to 58-43, six points for him. Most valuable player, to save a plaque from Honeywell, a thousand dollars to both DePaul and Notre Dame. It would be tough to knock Cummings out of that honor today. Rowan can't handle the pass, and it's going all negative for Notre Dame. If we knock him out of the MVP, Dick, they'll be in the investigation. <laughs> Mike Mitchell comes in for Ron Rowan. Now Notre Dame has to gamble more. It's starting to put pressure up court. The game's starting to slip away from them with ten and a half left. they got to create turnovers. Now it's Cummings time underneath. There you go. Doctor, it's a good operation, but you cut off the wrong leg. 60 to 43, 24 for Cummings. A man with boys. I want to go number one in the NBA draft this year. You know, for the last five years, the guy from the Midwest. Another turnover as a steal by McMillan. Nice Damn. play by Paxson. Take it yourself, all the way. Keep penetrating, keep penetrating, head up. Barner on an assist from Paxson. 60 to 45. Barner with a dozen. Well, the last number one NBA draft choice was a guy from the Blue Demons, Mark McGuire. He broke a run by the Big Ten, had four in a row the Big Ten. Four years ago was Ken Benson, Michael Thompson, Magic Johnson, and Joe Barry Carroll from Purdue, the Boilermaker. Bernard Randolph hits again. Speaking of Mark Aguirre, you picked an all DePaul team. We'll show that if we get a break here. People you feel are the five best in the history of DePaul basketball. Big George Mikan. NIT champs many, many years. 1945. It's nice to talk about someone older than me for change. <laughs> George may not like that. <laughs> Nine minutes remaining. Jackson takes it to the hoop and Cummings rebounds. Cummings is a glass eater. Dillard. Cummings gets the rebound and doesn't score. He is human. Gets it back. Hits the bottom of the rim. Look at him hustle. Go get him, Cummings. Go get him. <laughs> Foul on McMillan. And I think it's going to be third and inches. Now you watch what it takes to be an All-American. Now, all Americans got to get their jerseys dirty. They got to play 100% at all times. Watch coming. Watch them kind of bingo, bango, bongo in here, knocking around, reaching for the ball. It's the underside of the rim there. <laughs> Back at it again. Goes down on the floor. You, know, you think a freshman would be doing that. Not a junior that's an All American. It's, uh, there's so many superlatives that he earns. Uh, you just really can't say too many nice things about that. Junior from Chicago, Terry Cummings. He sparked the Blue Demons. They're on their way to number 21 in a row, the longest winning streak in college basketball. Every time the Connecticut State Police pulls someone over, a Honeywell computer goes to work. A Honeywell computer displays police reports on the car and warns if the driver is considered dangerous. That's our man. Roger. License and registration, please. Will you follow me, please, Mr. Johnson? Your wife just had a baby girl. Honeywell, you should see what we do with computers. Steve, a little one-on-one. -on -one. I had to do some yard work. Or make a low blight. I don't have to do any yard work.
would good friends really go at it this hard just for a beer? Well, consider it's Michelob Light, and that means a rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. 102 to 98. How did you do it? Defense? Michelob Light. Compare the taste. Don't miss superheroes. Postseason powerhouses. The Premier Conference Tournament. The ACC Championship Game. Exclusively on the home of great college basketball. Next Sunday on NBC Sports. An eye-opening year for Notre Dame, 8 and 15. Let's look at the last uh, five teams in our poll. Wake Forest, uh, there's someone to watch in that ACC. Kansas State, the same in the Big 8 tournament. Alabama, San Francisco. Pepperdine won that BCAA, and, or WCAC, rather. And uh, there was a team there you thought should have been in the top 20. Well, I thought Evansville, uh, the Purple Aces, they could be the best team in the state of Indiana this year. I got it. Wow. Indiana, Purdue, Notre Dame. You say Evansville? That's an interesting comment. Evansville's tough. They won their conference already, but they got to win the tournament to go to the NCAA. I believe. 62-45. Rucker inside. Over Cummings to score. Boy, you're in that one. Rucker has good potential. He has all the moves. He just needs a little bit more physicalness. Big to ball lead. As they... Go so, for their 26th. So Cummings, nope, missed that one. Rebound, Rucker, foul, Cummings. Next Saturday, we have a special lineup for you on NBC. And the teams that win, obviously looking ahead to the, champ, uh, to the tournament, Big East Southern Championship, Missouri Valley Championship, the Big Ten Championship, Wyoming at San Diego State, and on the coast, Oregon State, Arizona State. That's really a lineup of games next Saturday. The ball, the ball now, shoot me, Dick, with a 15-point lead is sitting back into a tight two-three zone. Mitchell for Notre Dame finally saves it. 7.44 left. Mitchell is the only graduating senior off this Notre Dame team. We still need a lot more to be highly represented next year. Well, they claim they've got five outstanding recruits already committed. Spencer makes it 62-49. He has six. Well, you know what they say about a freshman, Dick. Can't wait till they become sophomores, huh? Right. Inside the Cummings. Randolph from outside. Beautiful save by Corbin. He was out of position and still able to get a hand on it. Keep it alive for the Blue Demons. Paul Ben will be a bin buster in time. Gary McMillan. He now has four. And it's 64-49, the Blue Demons. Have to shoot from the outside. No room underneath I'd like to go back to the comment we made in the first half. Should North Carolina lose in that ACC tournament, DePaul very well would end the season as the number one club. They're number two now in our poll. Third year in a row. But they, but they have to learn that. the NCAA, Dick. They must go into that first round playing not to lose. They got to play to win. I think they're hesitant. And I really feel there's going to be a lot of pressure on Ray and the staff and the kids to, to win the first game. And they've lost their first game the last two years, UCLA, and last year it was St. Joe's after they entered as the number one club. See what happens. I still believe, Dick, that the, the problem with the seeded teams, they're sitting out that first round, and the non-seeded teams, they get the monkey off their back, they win their first game. Now the other guy's sitting in the wing, he comes out and he's nervous. I believe the tournament, the NCAA tournament, should either be 32 or 64. One or the other. I think it should be every team, just like a high school tournament. Give everyone a chance. It would only take one more round. Let everyone start. Put the weaker teams against the better teams so that the better teams obviously have the chance to win. Let everyone get in the tournament if they're going to make it 64. Well, I'll let that one slide by, but it brings up something that I believe it should be. I think that bowl games and NCAA tournaments, that the money should be split between the whole 260 Division I schools. I think the prestige of school gets just going to a tournament or to a bowl game is enough without turning around and putting six hundred seven hundred thousand dollars in some football things a million or two so they should spread it among all the teams instead of the rich getting richer let everyone enjoy the the fruits of those big television contracts i agree with you i think that would cut down on some of the recruiting violations as well yes 
You're making the rich richer. Foul on Corbin, his second. Well, if they're going to make a UCLA run here, you remember that, Dick? Oh, Notre I do Dame. very well. 1973, when UCLA had won 88 in a row and were leading by 10 points with four minutes to go. Well, it has to happen now. The Gipper has to return now. A little different personnel for Notre Dame in that <laughs> game, however. John Shoemate got the big basket. Father Hesburgh. Great and man. Digger Phelps' son to the right. 64-53. Notre Dame stays within 11. 540 remaining. Notre Dame putting pressure all over, trying to create a turnover. The clock is their enemy now. They can want to make this a 40-point game. They can run the last three or four minutes, but the ball's just too tough. Too much talent. No mistakes on the ball bench in the coaching ranks. 64-53 to Paul Eads. Dillard over Mitchell and scores. Skip Dillard. He has 10. 66-53. I'd like to go back to my point. I'd be in favor of reducing it back to the original 32, wow. where you're not getting the second and third teams and the tournament winner and the, and the regular season winner gets in, or going all the way. I, once you get to 64, why stop there? I don't know if you have enough time to go all the way, Dick, with 260 teams. There's only one more round, Coach. Um, I'd have to get an actuary to figure that out. <laughs> Actually, it's two more rounds. 64 is five rounds. <laughs> all right. Wait, wait. 128 is six rounds. 256. That would cover them all. Is only seven rounds. Seven rounds. You can play two more rounds and let the teams that have losing records work it out in the uh, early rounds. You have your doctorate in math or in English or in what? Well, it's certainly not in basketball <laughs> schedule making. <laughs> oh, I'm always around doctorates. 66 to 55 to Paul leading Notre Dame, and we have a timeout here at the Athletic and Convocation Center. Four minutes, 16 seconds remaining. Skip Dillard making the last to Paul Hoop, and the Blue Demons with their eyes on number 21 in a row. You know people like me. We're young, ambitious. These are the uniforms we wear at work, but these are the uniforms we wear when we serve part-time in the National Guard and the Reserves. You see, in the Guard and Reserves, you earn extra money. So you not only serve your country, you serve yourself. Yet while you serve, you can live at home and keep your full-time job. Because in the Guard and Reserves, you don't have to give up one life to live another. The National Guard and the Reserves. Talk to your local recruiter. Rolling out the barrels, that's what Texaco is doing, so you'll have the energy you need for now and in the future. To improve our refineries across the U.S., Texaco is planning to invest almost $3 billion over the next seven years. Better refineries mean more gasoline and more barrels of heating oil for you in the years ahead. That's one more way you can trust the star at home and in your car. Don't miss superheroes, postseason powerhouses, the premier conference tournament, the ACC championship game, exclusively on the home of great college basketball, next Sunday on NBC Sports. I know this is on a personal level, and Al's been accused of having long pockets and short hands, but he took all of us, the whole crew out, to eat last night. There must have been eight or ten of us, and we want to thank you. What was the bill, anyway? <laughs> the bill was in the minus pool. I don't throw any party. <laughs> well, you, you threw uh, open the DePaul record book, and you picked your all-time Blue Demon team. We'll take a look at that. Mark Aguirre, Emmett Bryant, Dave Corzine, Terry Cummings, George Mike, and hey, that's a whale of a ball club. Who should be the coach of that club, Dick? <laughs> I think I'd have to pick Ray Meyer. Terry Cummings on that all-time DePaul team. Boy, if he stays a senior year, he may be the all-time best. He's already in the top five in scoring with a year to go. 26 points today for Cummings. I believe he will. I was down in the Charlottesville doing a, a story on Samson for next week's game, the ACC final. And I asked him what he's going to do. He says, I'm going to take all my options. I'm going to put everyone through the problem again. And I'm going to wait to the last moment to say whether I'm going to stay at Virginia or not. But he, he was accepted. 
on the on the lawn, which is a very prestigious um, uh, privilege at the University of Virginia. There's 47 rooms on that on that lawn, and I also think that T.J. told him to stay. T.J. Thomas Jefferson. Oh, Thomas Jefferson, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you can still hear his uh, voice reverberating around the university that he founded. <laughs> and then uh, Allen Poe said, "You'll write a little little poem for him." Ted uh, Kennedy also attended uh, Virginia, did he not? Well, we'll look forward to that interview with Ralph Sampson at halftime of our game next Sunday, the ACC Tournament Championship. Meanwhile, here's Kenny Patterson. I want to repeat the line from Ray Meyer. He feels that by the time Patterson graduates from DePaul, he'll be their best guard ever. Boy, that's high praise from the master. That's tough when you think of Clyde Bradshaw. Boy, Clyde the Glide. I... So that was an outstanding, outstanding college guard. I don't know if Patterson plays under enough control, Dick, but maybe in time, as Ray said, he'll come along. He's, down. More, he's more like a water bug, up and down. Down by 13, Notre Dame with the ball, 314 left. We'll have boxing action for you live from Atlantic City. The final Paxson nails a long jumper, 68-57. He has 17. Digger Phelps only has one timeout left. The ball has five. Now the two All-Americans have shown their talent. Terry Cummings for the ball and John Paxson of Notre Dame. For the first time today, comes McCoy for DePaul, Raymond McCoy, wearing number 11. He's 6'1 and a half a sophomore from Chicago Heights, transfer from the University of San Francisco. He was compared to Isaiah Thomas in high school. Rucker to Viner. Working the baseline and then a turnover as Spencer throws it over Paxson's said, and right to Steve Dance. Oh, nice Our pass. Patterson. Listen, did you like that soft pass? I, I like the way your fingers never left your hand. Just like you coached me. <laughs> <laughs> Pay, Pay attention. Pay <laughs> attention. <laughs> You're too quick for it. Ray Myers yelling, time out! <laughs> it's like he's yelling in an alley in Chicago yes. someplace. <laughs> he got their attention. Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Time out! <laughs> Wait a minute, DePaul by 11. We know there is intelligent life on this planet, but it takes the right environment to make it thrive. One that feeds the mind as well as the body. An environment that recognizes the power of ingenuity. Encourages it, rewards it. Bendix creates this environment for its people, and they help to create the future. Bendix, the power of ingenuity. The sun fades away And the shadows say slow down Time to put aside the long day's ride And pass the good times around Push! Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream For a taste as smooth as its name Bush. Head for Bush. Head for the mountains. B Ringside as Frank the Animal Fletcher slugs it out with Tony Braxton for the USBA middleweight title. Then the All Stars and the Pro Stars go down to the wire in a team skate off of the World Championship plus Women's Pro World Cup surfing on NBC Sports World next. What's that? Yelling. You always okay. yelling for your timeout. You never give a stick to you. Yell. Uh, I thought he did. I heard him. <laughs> you didn't hear him. I heard you too. <laughs> Straight line, fellas. Joe Meyer Straight just out. waiting Terry. for Father to give him a chance. It's interesting. Ray Meyer, since leaving Notre Dame, going to DePaul, has coached now, of course, the Blue Demons 40 years. Digger Phelps is 40 years old. Dan Duff in for the Irish, number 22, a freshman in a foul by Mitchell. Media foul, and that probably by instruction from Digger Phelps, as that's the Irish hope that DePaul can't make the front end of some one and ones Normally, Dillard's had trouble in pressure situations at the end of the game, but this is not a pressure situation. He should bottom out both of these. On to go back to a point you made, so uh, ably and insightful. Dillard made that steal. With five and a half minutes remaining in the first half, DePaul at 26-24. The Irish had the ball, a chance to tie it, and from that steal, it's been all DePaul. Watch the foul, Colt, come again now. 
Gamble paid off the foul, the missed free throw. There they go, they'll hit him again. That oh. might be two foul shots this time. Let's see if it's one and one again, Dick, or two. Oh. I call it one and one. Stops the clock with 2.11 left. Now, uh, now the foul shot gets a little bit tougher. He missed that one, that's in his head now that he missed it. So he needs this one. The student body will start perking behind the basket for this one. He's two for three today. And he's their best free throw shooter at 77%. He's real pleased to make that. It took the monkey off his back. Averaging 13 points a game this year, Skip is. He's looking for his 12th on this shot. 70-59, and DePaul now leads again by double figures. 2.09 left. Paul automatically in the 2-3 zone. Axel, a tough jumper. He has 21. Nice play, nice play by Randolph, pulling up that time. Barner commits his third foul to stop the clock at 157. Uh, I call another one and one. I think from now on, any fouls that Notre Dame commits, I think you'll see him two shot foul. Davis just hoping that they missed the foul shot. That's their only chance. This is this guy's a scorer. Outside, inside, transition, foul line. It's a kind bounce, and it's a 10-point to pull lead. Randolph now looks for his 10th point. That's the scoring machine. Cummings, Randolph is second, with Diller third, all in double figures on the season. Well, Mitchell didn't get double figures. I thought if he did, that Notre Dame had a good chance of winning. This will be the 12th time. Mitchell doesn't hit that. Barner rebound. This will be the 12th time this year that a Notre Dame opponent has scored 60 or more points. And in those games, presuming DePaul wins, Notre Dame is 1 and 11. They've only won one time when their opponents have scored 60 or more. Ray standing up, Dick, he's saying, hey, how about the intentional foul? I was surprised they didn't call that one a, a two-shot foul. Barner has committed the last three fouls and has four now in the game. And again, it's Dillard. He knows the way to that line. One of the comments Joe Meyer made in the huddle during the last time I was, hey, treat this like a tournament game. You've got the lead. Let's hold on to it. Don't give them a chance. They're also allowed to call timeouts anytime they want now if they're trapped. The ball has three timeouts. That's what you call wild card timeouts. You allow the ball players to call them. Paxson takes it in. Oh! Rucker. Shot by Rucker again using both hands. Notre Dame just called their last timeout, I think. Here's that, here's that Rucker again. Watch him going up with both hands, which is surprising. Everyone I know taps with one. He taps with two, and this is the second time he did it in this particular game. Eight points for Rucker. Let's see it from another angle. Paxson kept his head up there, and I tried to play it off the glass. Didn't go in, but there you go. From West Germany. Down. From Miami. Kangaroo jump. World Cup downhill skiing. Mare looked good there. Marsha has a stunt coming up right here that's named after her reverse hecked over the high bar. Women's Pro Gymnastics Classic. Coming into the kangaroo. Oh, trouble. Getting ready to go for her dismount. Throws them into the fence. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Just to press offense now, all right? Skipper, if he needs help, maybe get in a tandem to meet it, all right? Come a long way, fellas. Let's go. Come on. A lot of confidence now. Come on. Let's get together, y'all. Let's get together. Come on, Dolphin. Get that head up. Come on. Come on, Todd. Come on. Come on, Todd. Don't give him any second shots now, all right? Seventy-four, sixty-five. DePaul leads Notre Dame. One thirty-four left, and of course the Irish pressing full court. That was my mistake, Dick. The Irish have one timeout remaining. Good D. Almost turned over, and they do traveling against DePaul with one thirty left. All right. 
You got a nine point lead. Big basket here. Watch for Paxson just to dribble into the middle and let it fly. Here you go, son. Looking for the three point play in there. They let him go. He can't hit it. He did have a cold day despite the fact he scored over 20 points. Foul on Duff. Freshman. And that's going to be a two shot foul. So the badgering by Meyer reminding the officials of the two shot foul is uh, rewarding for the Blue Demons. Bigger Phelps doesn't think so. Only three more games bigger than the is over. Think of the springtime. Think of uh, green grass. Think of your golf clubs. Think of a excellent recruiting year. Right, and a long season. 75 65, 114 left. The ball making them shoot from the outside, staying in that 2 3 zone. Back. Oh, you did not shoot the score. And the foul's going to be on Barner, I believe. Yes, and that'll be his fifth. Corbin will shoot down this end, I believe. Bill Varner goes out with his fifth foul. Coming up next on NBC Sports World, the USBA Championship fight. Frankie Animal Fletcher, Tony Braxton, live, Paul Rounder, Freddie Pacheco, Marv Albert standing by. They'll bring you that action immediately. Plus, the finale, the final round of the World Professional Figure Skating Championship. Uh, beautiful pictures and tremendous performances. And then the Women's Pro World Cup Surfing Championship from Oahu, Hawaii. Scenic North Shore all coming up right after the game on NBC Sports World. Tyrone Corbin at the line. He's the second leading rebounder and doesn't start. And plays about half the time. He has been a tremendous find out of Columbia, South Carolina. What he has to do is improve his medium shot. They say he shoots real fine in practice, but when it gets to be showtime, he tightens up a little bit. 77-65, eight points for Corbin. Our most valuable player, Terry Cummings of DePaul. Congratulations to him. And Cummings on cue gets the rebound. Thousand dollars from Honeywell go to both the University of Notre Dame and DePaul University to their academic scholarship program. And congratulations to our most valuable player, Terry Cummings, All-American, junior for DePaul. One of the things that hurt Notre Dame this year was that Joe Klein, when he transferred to Arkansas, he was 6'11", 240 pounds. Between him and Tim Andre, they had one outstanding center. They also had 10 fouls to give. And I think that um, Joe transferring probably cost Notre Dame five games this year. Eddie Sutton mighty happy to have him available next year with the Razorbacks. Take Scott Hastings' place. Cummings over his average, finishes with 28 points. He's going to come out now as DePaul empties the bench. And congratulations to that young man. Boy, just fun to watch him play. <laughs> Ray's a little happy. He's the meal ticket. He knows that Cummings and play like this, they're going to be a factor in the upcoming tournament. Well, Ray's back home, too. You know, he went to school here. The captain of the basketball team, his junior and senior year. Rucker uncontested against Burkholder. And it's 79-67, 35 seconds left, and a foul by Mitchell that will send McCoy to the line. Boy, that was a great upset by Maryland yesterday. Unbelievable. I like to blow a smoke ring. Uh, lefty, lefty, uh, yeah. lefty must have been stomping. Both <laughs> <laughs> during know, and after the game. But you know, I think it helps Virginia going into their postseason conference tournament, the ACC tournament. I think that, you know, when you have a loss like that, that you listen more to the coach, you become more team-oriented, and you don't want it to happen again. You don't want the close games at the end. This is a good sign here for the ball, that this was not a close ball game. I said in one of the Chicago papers that they win by 15, they're up by 14 right now. Duff from the side. Paxson inside with the big boys to rebound and score. John Paxson finishes, or about to finish, he has 23 points. Corbin, Allen, blocked by Rucker. Paxson with seven seconds. Duff, Paxson. 
nation's longest winning streak at one for Ray Myers to Paul Blue Demons as Meyer has just won in his great career his 676th game. 81-69 over his alma mater, Notre Dame, and Digger Phelps. Now let's check in with Sports World for a boxing preview and a preview of what's to come on this Sunday sports afternoon. Thank you, Dick. Marv Albert, along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco from Atlantic City, New Jersey, where later on on NBC Sports World, and what should be a Donnybrook. It'll be Frank the Animal Fletcher defending his USBA middleweight title going up against Tony Braxton and Ferdy. It should be nonstop action. It should be a Donnybrook because the Animal Fletcher is a natural middleweight, whereas the other fellow has to come up. Braxton has to come up to middleweight, and the experience is widely different. The champion has a great deal more experience with quality fighters. And their thoughts on this fight are widely different, as Ferdy discovered when he chatted with both earlier. Frank, you're going to fight this afternoon in a few hours, Tony Braxton. He has beaten you once, and you've drawn with him once. Now, what are you going to do different to beat him this time? I'm going to apply plenty of pressure this time. Uh, pressure is the main factor to a fight, and with Tony Braxton, he's a good boxer, and I'm going to apply plenty of pressure. All right, now, I know you don't like to predict, but you're telling me that you're going to do something to this guy. What is your prediction for this fight? Well, in four rounds, I predict to knock Braxton out. You think you're going to knock him out in four rounds? It will not go to a 12-round decision. No, it will not go to 12 rounds. It will be out in four. Tony, you're going to fight the animal. How do you fight an animal? Well, you don't fight an animal. You tame an animal. And then you put him away. You know, a lot of people are behind you. A lot of people are behind you for this fight. How do you feel about that many people depending on you? Well, you know, it's given me a lot of inspiration to go out and win the fight. Uh, it's a lot of support, you know. And, and it means more to me than it, than it did before when I fought the animal. We're not talking about that. You fought him before. You won a decision. You had a draw. This is the third time you face the same guy. What do you do? Well, in a case like this, you knock him out. So the TB Express looking for the knockout. Frank the Animal Fletcher looking for the same. It is all coming up on Sports World. Let's go back to Dick Enberg. So, 81-69 to Paul, longest winning streak now, 21 straight. Terry Cummings, 28. Dillard had 12. Randolph, 11. And Downing with 10. Paxson with uh, 23 to lead the Irish. And Brunner chipped in with 14. So, Paul looks ready. Yeah, they're ready, but they're still going to be nervous. That first game is just going to be a mountain to them. Of course, they stubbed their toe the last two years. They had a little bit of a knockout punch today. they got to maintain that type of knockout punch if they expect to go deep into the NCAA tournament. See you in Greensboro next week. For Al McGuire, Dick Henberg, thank you for being with us at Notre Dame. Executive producer, Don Olmeyer. The coordinating producer and today's game producer, George Finkel. Today's game has been directed by John Gonzalez, technical director, Bruce Berquist, feature producer, David Neal, associate director, Joe Michaels, our choreographer, Terry Davenport. Now stay tuned for Sports World, featuring boxing action live from Atlantic City, plus the World Professional Figure Skating Championship Finals, plus Women's World Cup surfing from Hawaii. Boxing will be live, 12 rounds for the USBA Middleweight Championship, Frank Fletcher and Tony Braxton. So stay tuned. Sports World follows these messages from your local station. Final again from Notre Dame to Paul 81, the Irish 69. Coming up now, boxing live from Atlantic City on NBC Sports World. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. We serve more of this land's top 100 business centers than any other airline. Fly the friendly skies. Leroy wants it. It's a whole world full of space out there. Just let me have my little piece of it. Leroy wants fame. And you've got it. Thursdays on NBC.